here. Oh, it's good against all three cores. It's great against the Bat Rider. It's great against uh, the Timber Slaw. This is a debatable one. I think in theory, you're like, oh, wow, Viper owns TA. But I think only in the laning stage. Later on, as this game goes, Viper does not like playing versus Meld and Desolator. You don't really build much armor, so you kind of get owned by that. And TA, you can lose your lane and go jungle. It's fine. So that's the one lane where I think it should be okay for Quest. But at least you'll slow down TA 2000's farm. And that's a big one here. Overall, I'm a little surprised that they forced this Bat Rider into the mid lane. They had so many good options if they were to put this on support here, but you're playing. Oh, on second versus Amar. Looking to kill the Tipper saw first. Max duration root and the right click should do the job. That's going to be Oxy. Support Revenge is going to be picking up the first blood. So, uh, Nisha, at least his match opponent, the Bat Rider, will be facing off against him right away at the start. But there is a start off kill for the Venge to help him out a bit here. Yep. Not bad. And what else am I going to say about this bat? I'm not entirely sure how this bat mid works anymore now that Sticky Napalm isn't really a spell. So he's going to go Firefly level I'm 1. This is the new age I'm bat rider here. Level 1 Firefly and just push the wave, which I don't think it's going to pressure Nisha at all. So this matchup will be a little bit interesting. It should be Puck favored, I will imagine. This Flame Break is a really strong spell now for the bat rider, but how do you hit that against a Puck? It seems very difficult to do. Yeah, and with, uh, you know, Bat Rider is a classic mid hero, but like quoting one of your favorite words, this is kind of new tech, you know, with this yeah, uh, it is. new I'm skill build. My please. It definitely is. And the other thing that is interesting, there's a lot of interesting things in this game. <laughs> we would watch Amar play a ton of this Tempersaw. You know what he bans most of the games he picks Tempersaw? Monkey King. But this game, he decides to pick it into the Monkey King second phase and this is a first phase monkey king so he decides this is a matchup maybe it's the techies that allows him to be like all right we're just gonna spam the monkey it's fine i'm not gonna go reactive armor whatsoever we'll have to see how that lane works out but in theory here liquid should have a huge laning advantage and being such a top caliber team that they are if you give this team a lead they can generally translate that into a w and I'm pretty sure Omar, he's been doing a lot of theory crafting with this Timber versus Monkey matchup. As you know, back in the day, a couple years back, we're still playing it together in the same team with Chris Thomas, going all the way back to uh, Little Creek Wave. You know, you've got one MK Master Tier player, you've got another Timber Sauce spammer. You probably shared a couple secrets between each other, it's like how the, how the matchups work out, what to watch out for. So you should come well prepared for this one. Oh, he definitely knows the matchup. He knows all his matchups on his patented heroes here. But well, for me, what was interesting, though, is like when he has the opportunity to ban heroes for his timber, because he's picked this timber first phase many times, Monkey King is one of those heroes that he has opted to go ahead and ban. But I do think it's the techies factor. It might just be the techies factor. He just thinks that with techies on his team, they'll be able to outspam him. Don't allow him to get that jingles. And then Foxy. Oh god, he's going for first blood, but he also gets wiped out by Quest. And it was an interesting stat there for a moment ago with the uh, Monkey King uh, win rate stats for Mickey. Dire victories, 100% radiant victories, zero. 100% dire, all right. Get a third one to keep that stat rolling in his favor. We'll have to see here. And mid lane completely even. It looks like actually uh -oh. Nisha, uh -oh. a little bit of trouble. Gotta take a lot of damage, at least from Noob. He's gonna win, off, win this trade off. Back. Sticky Come Napalm back. not slowing anymore. That's a big thing of why we don't see Bat mid too often anymore. Well, you love to see these new ideas, right? Before, everyone else had to play against the old Bat Rider mid. You just spam stickies, you buy your magic wand. Nowadays, it's it's a lot different. And you gotta relearn the matchup as the Bat Rider and playing against the Bat Rider here. And Noob doing a decent job so far, at least keeping his farm up. He's not shutting the puck down by any means, but he's keeping his own farm up and making this matchup look even. Off lane, they're gonna get the blast off connected on both Mickey and on Insania. Omar get hit with a boundless strike. That's a Jingle Mastery stack burnt for that. But Omar, he's got the upper hand versus Insania, and that should be a kill for him. Very, very burnt out. Omar squeezes in for the kill. Omar needs to get a bit of distance here. Oh, he's there making it work here. The taser, the disarm comes out again. Mickey, what you gonna do? Omar and Omar make, it ma make the magic work once again. And a courier kill right under the tower. They got everything out of that.
You normally don't see this as well, the level 3 reactive taser online, but against a Monkey King? Yeah, sure, why not? They, they got him to kill there. Mickey, he did a really good job at first. He used the uh, mischief and dodged the blast off there, but thought he gave that return kill there, but not against that clutch level up that he got right after killing the Oracle on Omar, allowing him to get that reactive taser. Really a heads up play by Omar there. Skill that one up. Again, Quest is up ahead in kills once again. Just like last game, they were they were three and zero, now three and one. But also did get that first blood. Maybe that's the big difference maker, but we'll see. It really pays off a difference here. Zai hasn't really been able to approach this uh, this TA too much, and TA just headed straight over to the jungle. TA 2000 happy, just kind of leaving this lane. Unlucky, Already uh, active in terms of the uh, jungle farm with this hero. Doesn't need and to this is just around. experience. Don't risk it. This is very smart of him. He won the laning stage, right? And then he realizes, Viper, he's level three now. He has this level two poison attack. No matter how much I'm advantage you have at T at this I'm point, not. it doesn't matter. So he just goes jungle. He's like, I'm done. He's level five now, so he's gonna farm in the jungle way faster than he will in the laning stage. And this is still gonna be free farm, by the way. He's gonna hit his timings of his Desolator, of his Dragon Lance, and I talked about it before. The Viper should have his strongest moments in the game just in the laning stage versus the TA. Only in the laning stage. As the game progresses, you get shredded by this hero. If he can ever get on top and get some right clicks. And they will get the coil onto the Batrider. Little well, Nisha hits now. Blood Blood great to miss it. Misses the Illusory Orb and the Terra Wave. But that Flame Break is gonna be enough to zone out the puck, so. Not successful with the kill on Liquid, also pretty deep onto the enemy side of the map, so nope. able to get back into Our mid fairly North fast. North and of course, it is TA2000 who's going to be showing up on the uh, on the extra farm. I right, see he sees an opportunity for more. Sure, we'll go for it. Or he might take some damage. I was going to say this game, in theory, should be favored for Liquid in the laning stage. Should but it's really not. Look at Mark. He's got a Vanguard online. He doesn't really care as they will go on to Insane here. Yeah. And look at look here. The 2000 as well. This guy's everywhere around the map. Throwing down that route, but it doesn't really connect onto the tempo. Radiant They're just gonna chase him down. And TA2000, that's Radiant a second kill for him. This guy fortified. has been everywhere else except in the lane. <laughs> he's getting kills, he's getting farmed. It's unbelievable, man. He's playing absolutely perfect. It might be like, oh wow, you left the lane at like four minutes into the game or Radiant's less. Bottom tower is you under you lost your lane, you got owned. But no, this is sheer experience and knowledge of the carry mashups. Because he knows, he's played against a Viper a few times in his day. He's like, this matchup, I know I'm Radiant's winning it now, but if I stay, I'm going to start attack. losing. So he has the foresight to just leave and continue on his advantage. So we can see the last one in the mid lane. And with both of the supports chasing around for a kill on the Shadow Radiant's Demon, they got an opening in the mid lane, but it's not quite enough for a kill for the Tickies and the Batrider finish up Nisha. It was a good response from Quest at the same time. I was, uh, I was never using scans, they were using everything. Basically just locate. Okay. Where is this Kari Shadow Demon? Oh, it's going for the Wisdom Rune. They TP with the supports and they left mid completely vulnerable. Nisha pretty happy to dodge that one. Straight for a smoke, they go. They did manage to get the tier one bottom as a result of the TA leaving. Getting a kill on TA2000 now would be crucial. I dare say TA2000 might be one of the best players in the Western European region. Yeah, coming out. in, but are they too late for a T2000? Oh, we just walked straight into them. No strike place down, but there's also Sentry on the ground, and this Templar trying to fight until the bitter end versus Moxy. And Omar can't kill anybody here. Get a bit of response of damage back. But will they attack. have extra back up? Amar is here. Oh, the Chakra. Look at the call of the bench. We'll get one. No Mikhail also participating to get the kill on the Techies. And that's something we haven't seen in a long time. People being able to punish TA2000. Normally, he has a good laning stage straight into free farming the map. You have to deal with some Lamar or Noob on the map. They bypass Lamar, get the kill on the TA2000. Slows him down just a little bit. Doesn't ruin his game by any means, but a good kill nonetheless here. Very important that they get this one. And Liquid up in the pace, at least of aggression, which they weren't able to do that much in game number one. 
Uh, now for sure, uh, able to play the map a bit more actively. Surprise! Isn't this sticky, so? I don't know, Amar blasts. Oh, Amar blasts off to try and maybe get the puck in the opposite direction there. Radiance Unable middle to tower connect there. Is under attack. A thousand gold lead here for a quest as yet again doing that thing where all three cores and laning sage are winning here. So we'll see what Zai can do on the Viper. He's been relatively quiet. He's like, hey, I wanted to own TA in my lane, but TA just didn't show up to my lane. No. <laughs> as soon as I got level three, TA was gone. So going for the boost of travel, maybe as a response to try and get more active on the map, be a little bit faster. It won't help you be tanky at all, not building any auras whatsoever. This is pure aggression. As he will commit to it. And that's exactly what they need to do as well inside of Liquid. You've got these heroes like the Venge, the Viper, the Puck. They just want to brawl early on. And the warding yeah. from Liquid. I think we should take a big note of that right now, how aggressive their wards are. They've got four wards on the map, all on the side of Quest's map. Yeah. So they want to get active. Dyer's top tower is under attack. A bit of a aggressive Halo placed down. We'll scout out movements from Quest for in their own jungle. This attempt from Nisha and Boxy will remain as an attempt. No catch towards the Batrider. Omar, he's in the mid lane. Nisha, not dropping down the coil there. We don't have enough information about, even with these wards placed down, they only see two heroes on the map. We we'll get a bit of glimpses here and there, but maybe they can keep up that pressure towards that mid lane tower. Catapult still alive, but no creep rate protected. He's gonna go down middle at the same time. Big battle on the bottom lane side. Gonna fall new. About to drop the mid gate. Needs one more hit, but he's slowed up a little bit. That 3% solo Napalm might just do the trick, and it will. And the bar. He's coming in for a turnaround. Here comes the black on the Omar as well. The dynamic duo makes it work again. They take down the mid gate. Monkey King. And look for Insania with that Oracle. Nowhere to run. No ulti for you. No escape. Double kill for Omar. Looks pretty. I wasn't going to say it looked good for Liquid beginning. It's like, oh, just Kaori is just going to die again. When they almost got the bat, it's like, okay, this is looking good. But at the end, it was just such a bait there. Is he able to fly over the tree there? And you lose your Monkey King, you lose your Oracle, you lose your Viper just for the Shadow Demon. Kaori, he'll take that any day of the week. He's, okay, going for yet again the Shadow Demon kill here. And I think there might be no escape in this one. Yeah, or is there? He's got third of escape for sure. He's got the perch of Mickey. Got another stun available. They might turn this on mid game, but he's buying so much time. Too low. He's definitely buying a lot of time. It is just enough for the turnaround onto mid game. And they will try to get him down. They will. The timber chain will connect. And Boxy trying to teleport out. Should be able to. Noob not going to get there in time. No lasso available either. So they do get a trade off. Shadow Demon for a Monkey King. They'll take that any day. as well. Zai going to get the teleport onto the Templar Assassin. Guys, this is why I picked this hero. This is why I wanted to kill the TA. And that's exactly what they get here. Omar going to be dropping to Boxy Stun. They find themselves a response in the mid lane. And that also looks to be a tier one tower going down. TP's request they can't free come to the protection of it they'd have to run. Dyer's top tower is Yeah, they under use attack. all their TP's top to Radiant's save the Shadow Demon and get the return kill attack. on the Monkey King that all of a sudden you could strike in the mid lane. And they knew that right as well. They everyone TP top there. They cut their losses. They're like, okay, we can dive mid now. We realize there's gonna be no TP's available to help TA 2000 here, so Dyer's really good uh, response there by Team Liquid there. Catching TA2000 off guard as Hayori is double stacking Angel. Oh, he missed the other one. That was cool. Oh. Tried to stack both of those, which I didn't even know that'd be possible. I think you probably can time it perfectly. Dyer's with the lingering shadow poison. Solid cry. Yeah, you just gotta be a real big shadow demon stacking there to get that one off. But it is possible. Already picked up six stacks this game, so uh, that's already more than enough. Helping out this Templar Assassin. Keeping up on that farming pace. DKB seems to be the. Oh, sorry. Uh, just later, definitely is the first one in, into the DKB force. Maybe might, if depending if the game goes well, he'll just knock into DKB and go straight into the dagger. 
this is normally what every TA queues up and they're like, we'll see how my game's going. And if they're owning, they're like, I'll get a blink and they'll be like, oh, I'm owning really hard. I I'm just get a Daedalus now and they'll just find any reason to knock it to the BKB. And if the game's going hard, they'll buy the BKB. And that's usually when they lose, when they have to buy a BKB. That's really it. That's definitely an idea to look at. Like, uh, if you're able to just get semi-aggressive with those blink positionings, you don't really need to think about that. But no, there is a lot of control. Talking about control, Insania, Moxie, and he's getting initiated on by Kaori and Amar. But Kaori already down. Tempersaw looking to drop as well. Liquid coming in with full force and respawned to this gank attempt. Getting themselves two kills, losing nobody. Also, Omar spotted in the river. Made even a third kill. Make a he's going for the chase. Slowed up a bit I mean, here. Reactive K2. It ain't easy. I mean, who's getting who there? Because I see Mickey losing like 60% of his health, and Omar yep. is only lost Dyer's 6%. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. That's techies. That is techies. But uh, these are good kills, and as, as you patented the, the Zyper, all over the map here, getting these kills, shutting down the Timber Saw, getting the TA kill, get these boots to travel. Really having an impact on the map. This is what we wanted to see from Zai in game number one as well, to have some type of impact on the map as he's playing like these, these niche heroes, right? The Nyx Assassin, the Viper, we don't see them a ton anymore, mainly because they do fall off pretty quickly. His Nyx didn't have a lot of impact in the early game, but he's making up for it in this game number two with the Viper. Also to mention that 100% win rate Monkey King. That sticks for this game right now that net worth is not looking hot for mickey 5700 the next hero would be the 7500 viper got a lot of catching up to do and they're risking it they're going all in he's got that over corrosion by the looks of it an echo saver is on the courier for him it's arriving just now he needs to get a kill with it and it looks like shadow demon is going to be a start at all Major Talzin, the blast off coming up for Omar, gonna turn now with Boxy. Kaori coming in with a buyback with the Shadow Demon, returning into the fight. Amar, gonna throw in that chunk, slowing down both the Punk and the Viper. Wake A, just waiting for him to get just a bit closer for the Wukong's command. And they slow up the Pat Rider, but they all zone out from the Wukong's. Not mining at all, but he just drops his ult. There's nobody to be caught inside of it. Let's get the reset. Boundless Strike on cooldown there. Not able to get a turn there. Batrider wanted to find initiation, but you're playing versus Insania Oracle. Kinda have to kill the Oracle first or bait out the false promise. Somehow else, but Insania doesn't really want to use it unless there's a lasso, unless absolutely needed. And that might be the best chance for Liquid to really get to control this game and get Mickey back into the game is winning a big team fight. Because he's not gonna farm his way back in this game. There's no way this Monkey King is gonna outfarm a TA. Just yep. by hitting creep. Very true. And also finding that entry into the game, Monkey King needs to survive most importantly. He cannot die, especially at the start of the fight. Oh, yeah. really hard. He's got the Pavis buff from Omar. Get that extra bit of tankiness there. But he's still gonna end up dropping. The nukes are too much. Boxy, he gets this kill. It doesn't go for Mickey with that final strike. Kill is a kill. Radiance top tower is under attack. It looks like they're forcing TA 2000 into this early BKB. Always a good sign when the TA feels like they have to build more defense and less damage here. Putting on this pressure here. But they do need to make a connection onto this TA at some point. Or maybe another again, Amar here could, could be good as well. This is, this is two games in a row. TA 2000 hits 10k net worth at 17 minutes. So he's, he's jumped that same pace from that last game. He's riding on a really high momentum. Has been killed off two times this game compared to the last game, but uh, it's not stopping him. This is what T2000 does. He loves playing his TA, Terror Blades, Medusas, these type of heroes that just flash farm the entire map. He knows his timings really well. You know who else knows his timings really well? Amar. Amar also going for a BKB, playing versus the Viper, playing against the Puck. This double BKB timing from Quest, that's what you're going to be looking for for Quest in this game. Oh, he's he's the Monkey King doesn't here. Break trees. Oh, the tree doesn't quite break Radiance there. Top he cannot stop the Monkey King on the spot. He is being baited out. Falling Perch slowing him down. Cuts down the Wukongs. Stuns uh, the Batrider. And the Bandit Strike teaches out. He's just not going to go into a Nisha. Four-man coil. 
is not an opening for Liquid. They're trying to get close to the Hard to stop the BKB. And I'm on for the turnaround. Puck also getting called the lasso. Pulls up to the minefield. And Mike he's in trouble. Oracle coming out from Insane. At T2000, throwing in the big hits. And Oracle almost dies. They're trying to go up the wrap around. And here comes the different song. Slice him down, Mike K. Still trying to find against the TH. But it's not going to be enough. He's going to be falling. And why the fuck for? Despite the initiation, the four man coil. It's a five man death for Liquid. Quest run them down. With the timing we Dyer's talked about, Lamar knowing his timing, so I did at least, and he had that BKB, and that is what Dyer's made that fight what it was. And of course, you got that coil, it was nice, but it was after the Monkey King ult was already used, right? That was not a coil inside the Wukongs, that was just a coil to disengage or fallen. help his team disengage. He did all the damage himself in that coil, which is basically nothing. Dyer's middle um, you just didn't have any more to launch that fight, and you're gonna Simply see the replay off. here. You're gonna see here that they go on mid here. The Wukong will go down in a second. There it is. Everything used defensively to zone out the bat. And then here comes Pog. Boom, nice coil, but the Wukong's is further down. Yeah, where's the rest? Out there. There's no damage there. Viper's on the low ground. And then Amar's like, alright, they got nothing. I'm popping BKB. I'm getting in there. And it was just a little too late there for Liquid. And a really good catch from Noob as well. Catching the puck on the side after that coil had ended. And of course, Amar turning around with that BKB, heavy hits in. And as soon as Mickey, he goes attack. into the front line, he's just got so much trouble ahead of him, which is pretty much the entire team of Quest. They will get themselves those big kills. Wipe and has 8k lead for Quest. Another lasso. Another kill. Like we're not really in a good place right now. Their core is falling behind. And the real power spike from Quest, it is literally online since that last team fight. It pretty much was already during that team fight. Now it just got a whole lot worse for Liquid. Okay, with T2000 approaching that shard. I wonder if he'll buy that out first or the blink. Yeah, he will. But having that silence. And look at Mar. This is why he went for the BKB on the Timber Saw. Not an item you'll see a lot. But maybe it's not enough. I mean, they killed the Monkey King at the same time in the bottom half of the map, right in front of the Tier 1 tower, as they do get Amar as a trade-off. But again, that is Monkey King just not getting even to 8k net worth. TA, meanwhile, 14,000 right now. That's a 6k difference between the two carries. Now, I was going to say before, these, these traps now silencing are going to be ultra annoying for Nisha on his block here. Oh, yeah. Not fun at all. Just a small pass already. Fight gonna get pulled into Kaori, pulled into Omar. Swap. That mine's gonna come to the top. One to three though. It's a good opportunity here for Liquid for a bit of a turnaround to trying to get these kills. One already down. Maybe the second move from the TP away. He's not gonna be successful in doing so in Kaori. He blinks out. Close for the teleport. Cancel from the swap. It's there. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Now that was the coil he was looking for. I thought the swap might be able to save him, but the swap is on cooldown from earlier of killing Amar, but it doesn't really matter. They still lose the Viper, but they get a nice return as Nisha. He's Radiant's getting big coils this game. What he needs to do is continue to get these coils when his team is nearby, so they can help dish out the damage. But unfortunately, the story of Mickey is a very sad one, as he has hardly been able to get anything in this game. A yeah, much needed, uh couple kills going for Liquid. That was not even just 2,000 gold, but that was 4,400 experience for both the supports and as well for the Puck. So, getting closer to that level 2 ulti on the Oracle, the recent cooldown, and the cast range, and of course the bench, uh, Nether Swap. More cast range for also that initiation assistance from your support, or even the saving capability. Both level 2 ults, they're really needed on all of these supports. It feels so bad having a level 1 nether swap on Venge. Because, like, you're, it, it, it's a big cast range, right? It's 700. It's not that big. It's not sure if it ever lands on time. Well, Zai, and get bullied by Amari here. That's just a straight up 1v1, but Tiki is going to intervene. As Oracle is there to drop the ult. That's a bit of damage out on to Kaori. Oh, they got the puck. The lamp. The puck at the same time. Oh, Liquid. Who's going to drop down? Nisha coming with a buyback. They're in a desperate situation. And they need to win this fight, too. Obviously, with the swap. Not going to be enough there. 
still inside the Wukong, but TH1000 on the edge of it, and now they can start to get on top of the Monkey King. Desolator, he will also apply. Nisha with the coil, TH1000 taken down. That flyback will lead into a kill, maybe even more. Techie's low, now the strike comes out, but there's a disarm. He's not hitting anybody, he's getting in trouble, he's gonna go down. Nisha. Still in the middle of them trying to get the snipe onto the Tickies, but Tickies is barely surviving there. Okay, finally getting a kill. Here comes Insania, but Nisa's down. That's a dive back. Oh, the puck, he's gone for 80 seconds, and Insania to follow suit. Triple, Triple for Noob. And again, another team wipe liquid. They got some good kills for sure, but they're still going to end up losing more. Uh, yeah, you lost seven heroes there. Seven Dyer's heroes, but... bottom tower is under attack. Not great. Best really playing for the win here, and onto the mid lane they go onto the Viper as well. Kaori will drop the demonic purge onto the Viper, and he's got the purge on himself as well, so he's not even dying to die. Getting all of the spells <laughs> off of himself, and they will get the kill. He even gets it for himself. Oh, well played coming out there from Zai as well. It's like, oh boy, that shard on the Shadow Demon coming in clutch versus Radiant that Viper. It really is making the difference there, and. 12,000 net worth of damage now for quests out of nowhere. That's just like Liquid's number. And it makes you wonder, is Liquid just looking more mortal as a team? Tour number one, we're like, wow, nobody can stand up the Liquid. They just look like the best team in the world by far. The quest here, Tour three here, they're looking to go four and zero against them. Which is a little crazy to think about. Dyer's bottom it, it might just fallen. be a matchup thing, or maybe, maybe it's just Liquid looking a little more vulnerable. Again with him, and maybe a bit of mix with the play style. If the panel could touch upon about that a bit more, why well, is it the monkey king stuck up? The Oracle only coming out just in time. Oh, he's gonna be locked down as well. Off to the wall. Think he's gonna be dropping as well, but Amari should be able to get out there in time. Sorry, very low on HP. Mickey's still gonna end up going down. And they will look for the Viper kill as well. Maybe even get more out of this with that flame break. Insania slowed down. He's got nowhere to go. He's down as well. Foxy and Nisha still trying to fight it to the end. Taking down Kaori. Gonna stop all the supports, but still three big course. Nisha! Barely gets that TP to safety, not even in the fountain, not enough god damage to take his life away. Man, he's just uh, continuing to farm, not even gonna heal up, and that Raider, he's coming for you. Oh, they're painting out Boxy, K2000, always dealing with Oh, it's just the, uh, yeah, the, the illusion for revenge, but uh, he was trying to interrupt the bait. I like the bait from Amar throwing in those casual shock from is like, maybe we're, maybe they're doing Tormentor, they're gonna be I'll taking some you. damage. Oh, oh. Close call. That's another close call. No catches for Foxy today. Dyer's bottom but I like that bait. You know, throwing attack. Chakrams into the Tormentor, bouncing out a bit of extra damage. Says, oh, they might be doing Tormentor. Maybe I can get something done with this illusion, but nah. Takes away the spoils. Not today. And I don't think there will be much Tormentor play here from Liquid. This Monkey King probably doesn't want to hit it. Well, they're thinking about it. Okay. Like outside. There you go, we're gonna bring it in. And will the shard be a game breaker for the Oracle? He's got the Reign of Destiny. That could help. A little amplification, a little bit more damage. It helps people inside the Wukong's command because Quest, they've got a bloody amount of burst damage. They've got some good sustain in the mix. Maybe the heal amp inside the Wukong's could help out. Yeah, this BKB on Mickey is gonna be absolutely critical if they want to win a fight. He's dying in his Wukongs. Oh, he's he's initiated. Liquid was looking for a fight. He's getting the response first. Comes at the final strike with the BKB. And Boxy's going to be dropping in the back. Boxy's his illusion and his hero. And now on the run. Disruption does connect. Coil connected as well. But he's inside turning around. Mika trying to get there in time. They've got the rate of destiny down as well. He's done up a little bit here. Wukong's also placed down the quest. And again, disengaging with the entire team. Nisha trying to get the kill of Kaori. It's not gonna be enough, and Mick Gay doesn't get the connection there, at least onto the SD. But new BKB is around, Mick Gay, he's gonna be dropping Omar with the mines. Oracle in trouble, that's another one going for Quest, and Liquid can't get the kills. Quest is always on the back foot. When Liquid finally initiates, Quest always seems to get the upper hand with who they're focusing, what they're looking at. 
Liquid they just, just one step ahead the whole time. Yeah, they really are. It doesn't feel like Liquid are getting their combo off the way they want to. This, it's supposed to be Puck Monkey King. They're supposed to drop the coil inside the Wukongs for the synergy. They can't run, but if you drop the Wukongs and the coil at separate times, it has to be at the exact same time if they want to win these fights. And they can Puck, they can be... Uh, Lasso's available. Get here. Gonna be dropping the illusion comes out into action, silent stuff, so not Echo much of a benefit here for, for Boxy. Look at the play of character connect onto the TA, but that's about it. I haven't seen a lot of lassos this game, but he is playing versus Oracle and Venge. That's not the easiest lasso game. At least not in the last few minutes, but uh, the earlier engagements, he surely did catch Nisha a couple times with the lasso. Right. And uh, maybe even the Viper. Hey, the team right now is kind of like an extra security to handle that. So. Perfect target. Yeehaw! Insania. Yeehaw indeed. Texas Batrider. 20k lead for Quest. Looking to get themselves an extra 100 DPC points. And the storyline surely still stands. Uh, I think Ego was pointing it out. They need to get well, in the major. That's the next step. Uh, I think I they mean, need some more. Yeah, it's like, well, we're going to win the major. It's fine. Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> I mean, they've got the winner <laughs> mentality right now. They've got something to play for. Skipping the regional qualifiers completely is on their mind right now. But Quest, they are. In the leading position, not quite done with the game yet, but very close to it. Gotta win this one first. Liquid, however, is there still something that they can pull or pull off here? Is it, is it a hopeless game? Is it just that one team fight and GG? What, what can Liquid do here? What, what's the what's the kind of golden thread they're holding on to that could still turn this around for them? What's the next step? Oh, they have to just hit the combo. They gotta make a Wukong Stingram plus Hot Coils connect. It has to be a big one, too. That's him. Uh, it's, it's, and yes, it is that simple, but it's difficult to do. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That makes sense. The, the gameplay is simple, guess. but the execution is hard. Yeah, we haven't really seen the Wukongs and the Coils connect in the fact that they want to. It's usually Wukongs defensively, or a turnaround Wukongs, and then the Coil comes after. They've really been on the the same page with their ability usage, but at the same time, they've kind of had to play defensively in Liquid. They've been on the receiving end this game, and if they want to get that call to connect, it's going to be a super risky play at this point of the game. He's going to believe it works. This has to be instinct. It's just Nisha and Mickey need to be doing a lot of communicating in this game about how these fights are going to go. Because, like, if you think about Foxy and Sania inside, they don't really have any spells that require communication, necessarily. Maybe Boxy can swap people back into the Wukongs, but they're just kind of reacting to what's happening in the fights. But the initiation is going to be Nisha plus Mickey. The hard part is you have BKBs available, so you can't just initiate so easily on the puck. So maybe the game plan is Viper, just bait some spells, forces the fight, has a buyback available. Once the BKBs go down, then Nisha and Mickey fully commit. Kills. But you're down 23,000 gold, so even if you Radiant's execute all those perfectly, it doesn't guarantee attack. you're going to win a team fight. There's a lot of variables and things that can and cannot happen in Insania. He might walk on a trap. I mean, it is a trap. It start falling apart, right? You don't have the detection on the Oracle, though. Wow, hiding Juke. right behind a tree, so juke around, Mr. the TP home. Wow, so on the boxy. Yeah. The over seal taught him off, though. The car, he's there for the cancel. Here comes Mickey. Like they're a bit vulnerable at this stage, so they can take this fight. Oxy will drop, but he's got the illusion as an action. Move up to the beacon, he's so in the ball. He's still trying to fight for his life. He left his best kill, they've got to get it. But at the same time, the damage is overwhelming from the side of Quest. And they get down. The Viper is going to be following suit. Again, three down for Liquid. Just couldn't get the damage out in time to get it, get themselves that one after one after one. Quest get there in time. And that just did not work disparity there. Like that fight was good for them. It just took them too long to get those kills. A little too squishy themselves too. And yeah. Get a couple good kills there from Liquid and normally you'd be pretty happy about these kills. But you give them right back, so you're kind of right where you started. 22,000 net worth down. 
Big Hill is going to be the TA 2000 TA if you can manage to get there. Of side that really feels like it's gonna that's what it comes down to i think you have to somehow bait the bkb on ta then get on top of her with the monkey with the wukongs and you just have to survive somehow in the day. but look at his network he's at 13,000 net worth he's the lowest bomb here on the game so even when he drops his wukong he still feels very vulnerable inside of it and that's never a place you want to be as a monkey king because that is your protection if you don't feel safe within your wukong's command you're just not going to feel safe throughout the game Maybe Insania, if he was in that fight, could have been the difference maker. Hard to say. That is so much vision for Quest. So many mines, so many wards, so many traps placed down. Regeneration! Let's count out the TA, dust it up as well. Here comes the rest. Oh, oh beautiful interruption. Three-man blast off coming out. And Quest still already stacked up in numbers. He's going to get the lasso. Pulls the Monkey King away. Who comes broken? And TA is now needing some help. He's isolated. He's being chased around. Disruption saved priority. Find some time for him. Roxy's going to go down. Roxy, he's trying to fight with that illusion. And TA 2000 will fall. Sai will get the kill, but at the same time, Noob and Omar are going to be cleaning house with the rest of them. They really just got one kill, but Liquid just getting dismantled that fight. Dying all over the place as their guy kill the TA, kill the TA, somebody do it, but he done it. But at what cost? He losing everything for it, except for Nisha Puck. And that also means Roche will go the way of Quest. Still I, they're doing what they can. I mean... I think they're playing these fights really well on Liquid with the resources that they do have, as you're going to see in the replay here. They can probably tear the fight apart. Yeah, I really liked how the Batrider here pulled McKay outside of the Wukong's command here. Like, instantly, this Wukong's could have done a lot of work for them, but look how much time they spend trying to kill this TA. It takes forever. Meanwhile, the monkey's dead. Oracle's dead. Yeah, get Kaori. Sure, we'll get him. Let's get the TA, but look at Mar in this fight. They don't have an answer for him. They have so many things that they have to deal with in these fights, and they just don't have the net worth or the capacity to do so. They end up losing a whole lot of heroes for it. They just have the only one to escape from that battle. Mar found Insania at the start of the fight. Batrider finds the Monkey King. And then Timbersaw joining the fight back in. Batrider joins in as well. Two heroes down. It's, it's, it's easy from that point onward for Quest. You gotta kill this TA, you gotta kill this Timber Saw, but with what damage? Are you gonna kill both these heroes in the same fight? Maybe if they're spread out and they're two different fights, you got an option here. Damar, look at his items. Yashikaya, alright. Yashikaya, Scythe of Ice. I don't know if, like, why he has a Yasha, but he's a bit of Maybe a bit of disrespect. That is disrespect right there. Put some respect on Mickey's name. Mickey on the camera as well. He's not sure feeling really very happy about that. Uh, that's the prize, boys. Liquid trying to get something out of this fight, but it doesn't really feel like a fight at all. It's just a, it's just a slaughterhouse. Forty-six kills in the making for Quest, and there, Roshan, he's back home. Quest will start it off. Do we got a replay of Mickey dying there? I want to see that again. That's uh, done, like, oddly satisfying. His reaction was a bit like, oh, come on, guys. Kind of, kind of like half smile, but half disappointment at the same time. It's like, yeah, you kind of saw it coming. We'll get a replay of that. But uh, TA 2000 going to pick up that Aegis for himself. And the cheese goes for Omar. So the techies will have that extra bit of pinkiness there. 28,000 gold. Quest feeling invincible in this game, as they should. Mar picking up a Yasha on the Timber Slot, just so he can run around the map a bit faster here. And he is a universal hero, of course, too, so... Radiance mid damage. They smell the enemy for sure. Walk straight into the entire Quest gang. And then leaving the Templar Assassin Gage in the jungle. Oh, and the mid lane's pushed in. Nine kills, 400 Dyer's CS Templar, but it is actually a bar. Oh, Paul for the Mickey with it. With it. Yeah, but Mickey is going to get lasted up. She's going to last it. It's a swap to bring it out. Wukong's going to have their place as well. Quest, like this with that rider. Teams it down for also fairly low on HP. Does that still with the BKB? Foxy already out of play. And then he's going to be dropped with a shocker coming out. They will delete the record. They'll probably keep putting over the buyback, but it's a bit too late for it now. As they 
they will lose Nisha. They're losing that end early on as well. Trying to keep them at bay so Sai able to disengage. That's just the Shadow Demon kill. That's everything they got out of it. They got a cheese, but they didn't get the Aegis. I think Amar just casually ate that cheese because he was low on mana. It wasn't even like I'm dying cheese. It was like, this is a luxury Dying's cheese. <laughs> Looks like a fine top. cheese. is now open for the taking. 30k difference, three man spoke, Viper spoke instantly breaking as the Tipper Saw is in range. Can get close. Liquid is hanging on to the bitter end here. I think they gotta wait for this Wukongs and BKB on the Monkey King if they even wanna entertain the idea of taking one more fight. 20 seconds are cool down. Still 10 more to go. 2000 in the front, we'll start off with the stun swap coming out, maybe they can get the Aegis out of the way, very close to getting it, Lasso's also there, the Venge getting pulled to the low ground, Roxy's got nowhere to go, his Illusion's gonna get deleted too, burn it slowly, D2000, out of all things, this TA refuses to give in, refuses to die. They're gonna get a bit of heals here, wants to get this TA, but surely they'll get him once. But with that melt the spell is how this Viper matchup, we talked about how good it can be in the lane. It just gets worse and worse as this game progresses. He's got That's so many refraction charges as well. Like, how do you get through 13 instances of this damage you made? Like, uh, if, if he wasn't a problem already. Level if only he wasn't. <laughs> Dream World Liquid's living in. The 2000 has been a problem from honestly the entirety of this game. Straight from the lane yeah. stage, all the way on. Had a first good few waves, and then it's like, alright, I got what I need out of this lane stage. Went and hit the jungle, and here he is, knocking on your high ground. What are you gonna do about it? Something. Got a lasso and an illusion this time. Doesn't quite get the connection there. But they don't mind. For them, it's just an ability amongst the others at the moment because they still hold on to a pretty sizable lead. Liquid will force out quests from their high ground thanks to that. But I was going to sing my praises now since this might be the last time I talk about quests. K2000 has been the most impressive carry player for me of this tour.